Hello, Algebra 1. Uh, today we're looking at Lesson 3.6, Solving Special Systems of Linear Equations. And so, uh, <clears throat> just like we've learned before, um, some equations will have nice solutions, but other times um, we'll find out we have no solution, or we might have all real numbers. Well, today the possibilities are um, they'll work out like normal, and a graph of a system working out like normal would be where the two lines, because if you're talking about a system with two equations, the two lines cross, and where they cross is your solution. And I know it's an X and a Y, but it crosses at one coordinate. Um, and then um, there's other possibilities, though. It could be that when you graph your two um, equations in your system that they're parallel and if they're parallel they're never going to cross and so you'd never have an x and a y that would satisfy both equations at the same time. And then the last possibility is that it could be that they turn out to be graphed right on top of each other and when that happens we say there's infinitely many solutions. We don't say all real numbers because um, if you're this point right here at 1, 1, 1, you're not a solution to the system. Uh, if you're over here, you're not a solution to the system. Uh, but you are a solution to the system if you're anywhere on this line because that they overlap. They overlap continuously, so there's infinitely many solutions. Now, when you solve them algebraically, you're going to find out things are a little bit different. Uh, when you solve these algebraically, uh, you'll get an, an X value, plug it in, get a Y value, or, or whichever first. But on this, what will happen is the variables go away and you'll be left with a false statement. And when that happens, you'll say no solution. For this to happen, your variables will go away and you'll be left with a true statement. And then you'll know it's infinitely many solutions. So let's take a look at some examples here. Um, to, to get us uh, to understand what's going on. So um, solve the system of linear equations by using graphing and substitution. So to graph these, we are in luck because they are in slope-intercept form. Y equals mx plus b. We are ready to graph y-intercept of 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, down 2, back 1, down 2, back 1, down 2, back 1, down two, back one. Use a straight edge and solid line or dashed. It's gonna be solid, isn't it? It's gonna be solid because it's an equals. All right, now we graph the second one and find out where they cross. Okay, so negative five is my y-intercept. Up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. And pretty quickly you find out what? These are parallel. Solid line. These are parallel. And since they're parallel, we know that there is no solution. Our answer is no solution. Uh, let's try this using substitution. In class, I'll say this until I'm blue in the face. Um, write them side by side. Whenever you're solving systems algebraically, write them side by side first, and things will just flow so much better. Um, they want us to do substitution. We can either take 2x plus 1, put it into this equation, or take 2x minus 5, put it into this equation. Either way, you're going to get the same equation. It's kind of funny. Um, so I'm going to do it this way. 2x plus 1 is equal to 2x minus 5. And then when you try to get the x's together, as you would, you try to get the x's together by subtracting 2x on each side, property of equality. But what happens is the variable goes away. You get 1 equals negative 5. And is 1 equal to negative 5? No, that's false. So you would say no solution. So that's how that works. Okay, so let's flip it over and take a look at uh, another example. Um, this one's going to be a little more difficult to graph. Um, I suppose we could graph by using intercepts. 
that that would be kind of interesting but we'll go ahead and do slope intercept form i think that's probably what they intended so i need to get y by itself here to get it into slope intercept form so i'm going to add the 2x over and we are there up two over one up two over one up two over one down two back 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 one solid line or dashed well it's equal to so it's going to be solid and then we got our other equation to to do here so we got to get it in the slope intercept form so we're going to add the 4x over first divide everything by 2 and my slope intercept form is y equals 2x plus three up three then do the slope up two over one up two over one and we are on the same line so i'm going to put double arrows on there to make it look like i graphed two of them if that kind of makes sense but they are right on top of each other so that means it's going to be infinitely many solutions all sorts of answers that will work all sorts of answers that don't work as well so there's infinitely many solutions not all, not all real numbers uh for elimination I'm going to write them out side by side because I do that every time. But they do want us to do elimination. So from there, uh, I want to make sure they line up and everything lines up. So I'm going to write one underneath the other. And to do elimination, we want to add these equations together and get one of the variables to eliminate. And right now, that's not going to happen. So what I need to do is I'm going to multiply these numbers because they're smaller. I can see that if I multiply this top equation by a negative 2, then it will become a positive 4x, and a positive 4x and a negative 4x would eliminate. So I'm going to multiply this top equation by a negative 2. I'm going to rewrite that down here. I'll get 4x minus 2y equals negative 6. And, uh, oh, check it out. Oh, dang, all right, so everything goes away and we get zero equals zero. And that's true. And if that's true, that means our answer is IMS. Infinitely many solutions. Okay, these word problems, um, really, it's kind of interesting because in, uh, in math, we're so concerned about giving problems that have nice answers a lot of times. Uh, we didn't, we, we, we kind of gloss over the fact that sometimes you have a word problem that doesn't have a solution, which is kind of an interesting idea, but, uh, but it's a good, a good thing to realize, you know, not every problem that you can write equations for is going to have a nice answer or an answer at all, actually. So um, check this out. It says the perimeter of the trapezoidal piece of land is 48 kilometers. The perimeter of the rectangular piece of land is 144 kilometers. Write and solve a system of linear equations to find the values of X and Y. So um, yeah, let's do it. Um, to get perimeter, you just add everything up. So 6Y, well, and then another 6Y. So I'm just gonna multiply it by two. And then 2x and a 4x, and all that adds up to 48 kilometers from up above. Um, our, our other equation, we're going to have 18y, but we've got two of them. And then we're going to add to it, uh, oh, we got two 9x's. We got two of them, so we'll multiply by two. And they're going to equal 144. So to solve this, I'm going to clean this up a little bit. This will be... Um, a 12y, and this will be a 6x. I'm going to write this in standard form. 6x plus 12y equals 48. That looks nicer, yeah. And then over here, um, oh, I'll put the x's out front. So we'll have 18x um, plus 36y equals 144. And uh, from there, I'm thinking I'm going to use elimination here. It, you know, it doesn't matter, but I think elimination will be pretty nice. I'll write one uh, equation under the other. They line up nice. And 
And I'm going to multiply this equation with the smaller coefficients. I'm going to multiply it by a negative 3 because that will get me negative 18, which will be opposite. So I'll get negative 18x minus 36y equals and uh, negative 144. And if we add those up, oh dang. We get zero equals zero, which means there's infinitely many solutions to this problem. So there's no single X and Y that will be a solution to this problem. There's all sorts of possible answers. So there you have it. Um, all right, well, um, yeah, have a good day.